Welcome to our event, uh, My Life, My Business. Wish I was here and we still on this journey. Um, Shanaz and I, as, and, as my co host, to inspire you in all the different ways that draws from our experience or whatever we find in literature to get you to live a life that is fully engaged, a life that you enjoy um, every single day. A life that you find fulfilling, a life that is fruitful, a life that is filled with uh, purpose and a life that takes you towards your goals and a life that you lead specifically with others so that your enjoyment of it is so much more because you can't really enjoy life without traveling with others. And so, yes, um, Shanar spoke to us the last time we were on Clubhouse on um, how low self-esteem shows up in your life and what we can do about it. And it's fascinating. You can either listen to the playback on Clubhouse or you can uh, listen to the um, edited version, the podcast on our uh, YouTube channel, the Mufasa Coaching Practice, and you can find it there. We have a, an extensive playlist that we've recorded over a period of years. So, um, as Shanaz just put it, it, it seems it's my turn uh, today. And um, I was thinking about um, a topic, um, a topic that might engage you today. And, uh, you know, what comes up for me is this question is, why have a coach? And I'm not talking about a sports coach. I'm talking about um, an executive coach, a business coach, a leadership coach, a wellness coach, and there's a variety of different labels that one can assign uh, to this, but basically, why have a personal coach at all? And I, I just want to address this topic, and hopefully we have more than enough time to, to chat about this, Shanaz. And um, yeah, and I wanted to start it in particular um, in, this, in this manner, and just basically, you know, uh, first address what is not coaching. So in, in me addressing this, I'm touching on Shanaz's expertise and she's quite welcome to, to speak a little bit more about it. But coaching is not consulting. Because what is consulting? Consulting has an agenda and some possible answers and these are brought to the client and this is what the client pays for. And um, they are experts in, in certain fields and they therefore promote themselves as, as, as such. And um, the consultant designs a solution that addresses the problem for the client. And uh, once the solution is implemented, um, then the client is left uh, on their own to either reap the benefits of the solution or to further implement the solution by themselves. Um, so the, the consultant also would suggest new ideas um, from their knowledge and their experience and maybe even their intuition. And, um, and so, yes, so when you want a solution um, to a particular problem that you're having um, and across the many fields, uh, many areas, whether it is um, personally you want to build your wealth and you want a wealth portfolio, you see a consultant who will tell you exactly what to do, what decisions to make, what uh, options to choose, and you choose them, and then you would live and die by those consequences. Hopefully after you had a very good experienced consultant and um, they have advised you in a way that you can rationally make the right choice. Now, another area um, is mentoring and therefore coaching is not mentoring and what is mentoring well mentoring is, is literally role modeling by a person who's been there and done that will show you the ropes and uh, imparts experience and shortens your learning curve so you know it's also very much specifically in the area of your interest where you would want to glean from somebody else um, and they impart this knowledge and somebody who is really interested in your development and would do so um, with a lot of 
a support. It's also not therapy broadly, and this is probably an area, but I'm just going to briefly mention. Um, and in, in the context of what I'm talking about, what, what is therapy really? It helps um, you to fix problems, overcome issues, and sometimes manage mental illness. And um, the therapist helps patients, clients, to figure out the why, what is the reason, where is the opportunity for healing, and to overcome that healing. So you've got to basically sit and undo the traumas that brought the particular issue into your life. So it's important for you to do that. And both cons uh, and, and all consulting, mentoring, and therapy can happen in conjunction with coaching. And so what is coaching in this case? So I looked at a particular organization's definition of coaching. And, um, and this is IPIC that's based in New Jersey. And um, these are the things that would distinguish coaching from the consulting, mentoring, therapy model. And that, that, number one, the coach has no agenda except to help the client to get what they want. Also, the coach's true expertise is in the coaching process rather than in a particular functional area. The coach also accepts that the client is the expert and has within them the answer to any situation that they face. Also, the coach would stay with and partner with the client to help them implement a plan that they develop in partnership with one another. Also, a coach is a trusted advisor who provides a confidential and safe environment in which the client can explore their issues and concerns. And uh, last but not least, a coach would focus on solutions and helps the client focus on how rather than on why, but how to um, achieve their goals, their dreams, and their visions. And so, and that is basically a nutshell definition. I mean, if you Google this, you'll have a wide variety of different opinions and definitions and this is the one that I choose to align myself with um, now if that is 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 the differences between coaching consulting m mentoring and therapy is if you are interested to have a coach well when do you choose a coach typically I mean what need would suddenly arise that would um, bring you to this point well generally speaking from just my my experience is that when you're at a crossroad in your life or your business or your career and you want to make a change in your life and you you, you don't know how to proceed from there you know sometimes it's just like I'm dissatisfied with where I find myself so I want something new I want something fresh in business it could be um, I need, a, I need to turn around my business and I just don't know what to do next. Um, or I want to grow my business and I, I need to implement a plan and I need support as I do so. Or I'm growing too fast as a business, what do I do kind of a thing. And what plan do I implement to ensure sustainability and resilience. And um, generally a question of just don't know where to start to implement the change that I so need or want in my life. Sometimes you know exactly what it is you want to want to achieve. You, you have a very clear vision, but you just don't know um, what the, the scope of the plan needs to be. What are the, you know, the, the different things you need to be doing, the things that you need to be overcoming to achieve that vision. Sometimes it's just a you know you ought to do something and you wanted to do it in a long time um, and you've been procrastinating and um, therefore you just need somebody that will partner with you in terms of making the progress that you so need. Um, and I can go on and on and on about all the different things, all the different needs that you might have that will trigger the need for a coach. But once you've decided you, you want to have a coach, and, and by the way, it is you want to make the progress towards a desired future, right? If you have a positive expectation of the future and, and you want to take the steps towards that and you just don't, 
and you need the assistance to get there. You need the support um, to overcome external barriers, internal barriers. A coach as your partner will help you get there. And as said before, the coach deems you as an expert that you actually know and have within you all the tools and the strengths and the talents and the abilities to get to where you want to be. So, um, how do you choose a coach, basically? Well, let me, let me start off with this, is have a budget, uh, generally speaking. And uh, that will determine um, what kind of program you will be offered, uh, for how long, and so on. But um, you could go onto any database, um, like for example, the Comensa database, and have a look at the coaches that are featured there or on the ICF database, which is via their websites. In, ICF is International Coach Federation. You can have a look there, and you can you can Google uh, on a variety of sites. But once you have a few coaches in mind, it is um, whether the coach initiates it or whether you initiate it, is have a chemistry session. Um, and um, what typically happens in a chemistry session is um, you, you kind of get a, a feel for how experienced the coach is in the coaching process. Remember, you don't necessarily want a coach to be an expert in the particular field, other than in the coaching process. That's what makes them a coach. Um, so, and then you need to really check in with yourself and um, ask yourself whether you feel comfortable and safe with a particular coach. Um, and I would normally say, is, well, well, what does your gut tell you about this coach? What does your instinct tell you? Um, because part and parcel of um, the coaching conversation is there comes a time when in the plan that has been developed for you and by you, because it's a, co a collaborative process, there are going to be many opportunities when you have to step, step out of your place of comfort, your comfort zone, your, your place of familiarity. And there are times when you have to take a step into the unknown. And um, that's, it's always been some sort of area that you know you needed to um, start something, but you, you know you, there was the fear of the unknown. And a coach will help you um, break it down for you to such an extent we are willing to take that step, have the desire to take that step, and be ready to take that step. And you got to trust that when you have a small little nudge in the, in the small of your back towards that goal, you need to trust right, that the coach has your best interest in mind because the partnership is not about what the coach has in mind for you but what you have in mind for yourself. And the coach is bonded with you to ensure that you achieve that particular goal. And lastly, you know, um, it comes down to, all right, um, what program is being proposed for you? So you need to evaluate the proposal and, and therefore the quote and you make your decision based on all these factors. There are times when, you know, you, you look at the profile and you, you, you're attracted by the experience. Um, if, 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 if you are in the financial field and you feel that the coach's background is in the financial field that you would want them to work with you, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Because remember, it's not about the, the expertise in a particular function that you're looking for. You're looking for the expertise in the coaching methodology in the coaching process um, and all right if 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 you want to know what that expertise is that chemistry session will let you know but you you know you will also get references you can apply for references and ask uh, obviously in South Africa with the Poppy Act um, these have to these references would have to be given with the approval of the referee uh, just bear that in mind but now once you've chosen a coach and you've agreed on um, payment terms within the terms and conditions offered to you, it's now time for the coaching conversation to start. Um, just bearing in mind this particular point is that a coaching conversation um, works within a framework. However, it is never linear 
it sometimes feels like five steps forward and ten steps backward um, because the conversation goes to where the client is at and there's some new realization some new information that pops up that um, wasn't conscious before um, before the coaching conversation started you have to go back there and acknowledge that that exists and, and then the plan is how to address it and so um, with the different frameworks that have been used the key thing is if at the start of the coaching conversation you are dissatisfied with status quo you're dissatisfied with what your life is like because you you just want something else right and you just didn't know what what that particular else is then yes um, your coach will work with you to develop a basically um, a vision uh, of an alternative future right that positive expectation of an alternative future you develop that you articulate it you define it and then um, you come up with a plan in terms of um, how you want to achieve that particular vision and that plan would then include uh, how to overcome barriers you know um, and, and typically barriers to change are the costs of change and what are those those are external and they internal that means your personal barriers uh, to change and addressing those um, to ensure that you make progress towards um, achieving your particular goals objectives or vision is very important so uh, in, in many other frameworks and, and is one that I particularly uh, like is, is you know is starting out with um, always a goal in mind exploring um, your current reality and you know it's it's not just focusing on those barriers that you're exploring but also what are the the positive forces the boosters towards success what sits in your hand the strengths the things that you have that you can harness it's not just what you don't have so you don't just focus on the gaps and what you lack you focus also on the things that you have in your hand and then the very creative process of exploring all the different ways that you could possibly take to achieve your goal and then you know um, selecting the optimal one then you figure out what is the plan what will you do by when will you do it and also um, checking in and understanding how willing you are to take those kinds of steps towards success so broadly speaking that will be the coaching conversation and and so you evaluate the impact the of the coaching conversation by the changes you are prepared to make and it's literally the progress towards um, the goal that you've essentially identified with your coach is knowing you're making progress taking the steps seeing the changes happen no matter what it is whether it's in your business or your career whether it's personal um, you would know that you are making progress All right so that in essence is um, the conversation around why you would choose to have a personal coach thank you thank you for listening so that was really interesting and I think that I, I was kind of listening to the I was thinking of cross I was, I had this word in my mind cross pollination <laughs> in terms of the how in terms of the um, therapeutic world in a sense that what what I often find is that clients coming to me for obviously in counseling there's a an emphasis on healing but um, you often find that some of the clients can benefit then from coaching, um, you know, where they are more focused on what they want and their goals. Um, and then I find that sometimes um, I actually find it working. Most of the times I find that after I've seen clients for a bit um, of counseling, then the, it's like they take on a new direction and they are, they, they kind of are more able to focus on what they want. And, and I'm actually wondering whether sometimes because people don't struggle to access counseling, whether a lot of um, probably maybe new experience, those um, accessing counseling probably could, um, or coaching could benefit from counseling. 
because I've actually found that people become unstuck and they can actually more f- clearly focus on what they want. And when I've started the other way, you just to, due to one or two circumstances, it was actually challenging, but it could just be me. No, actually, you're quite right. I mean, one of the things I've mentioned is that, you know, what, what I'm sort of calling the internal barriers to success, you find that um, there are areas of um, past experiences that have been fairly traumatic that influences how you think about your future. And, um, if, and the coaching process, if, if you started with the coaching process and realizing that there's an area that needs healing, for example, where somebody actually needs therapy or counseling, is um, then uh, f- uh, making that part of the plan, for example. And that could be the plan, and that could be an activity on a critical part. Say, okay, let's suspend everything until those counseling sessions have taken place and to become more aware, to explore what sits in that place because um, I think most coaches are not therapists. And even if a a therapist becomes a coach, they wear one hat or the other. Yes, so I I I know um I know about two two people who um started off in counseling or psychology or social work and they've gone into coaching and they in a sense wear both hats, but yeah. I think that they they um I, yeah it, and yeah, they wear both hats, but I think that they often start off with the coaching aspect. The one that mm. I know, I guess it depends on who you're accessing and who acts, yeah, you know, mm, um, mm. in w- where you find your clientele, um, mm. you know, it, it would depend because um, obviously in some of our fields, we also look at employee wellness, you know, that's an aspect or occupational health. And so a lot of the times in the field of occupational health, that is where you are working with people who are accessing it from a point of enhancing my leadership capacity, wanting to, they're not necessarily going for counseling. And and mm-hmm. so I think, so if you work in that field as a mental health practitioner, um, you're probably going to lean towards um, coaching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, I, and, it's, and it's just understanding when you need whatever you need, because some people are not ready to move their they, or take their lives forward in a certain particular uh, area or you know they're ready to go but as you said they're stuck and being stuck means um, it's it's that sort of it's not about I need a I, I don't know how to come up with a plan it's not even understanding why you're stuck in, in in the way I understand it in a way I would operate with a client is then to be able to say okay go why don't you have a consultation why don't you um, consult with a therapist, uh, be that as it may, and, and particularly deal with that area. Sometimes these things happen in parallel, and sometimes, as I say, you suspend the coaching conversation until that can happen. Um, yeah, I, because... I find that, yeah, I find that really interesting to see that, that you, well, not, I guess, you know, when, when I understand the process, I can see how that, that comes up in terms of the barriers, yeah. You can, if, yes. you, if you're working with a client, um, you can kind of see that happening. Yes. And, and you know, in my experience is where I suddenly realized there, there's a particular area that we've now touched on um, that's a cause for concern is when there's suddenly no progress. Suddenly there's procrastination. Suddenly there's a lot of avoidance uh, of taking the next step. So trying to understand what's going on. So obviously we go through the process. Then, then you start coming to that point where it makes a lot of sense that you move forward. I mean, I've, I've had clients who, who spent a considerable time in therapy would say to me, okay, look, I, I've now dealt with all those things. I've, I've sat um, in that place where I needed to receive healing, but I'm now ready to move on. I now need a plan that I want to implement. So they were clear about um, the different uh, forms of intervention that could help them actually take their lives forward. Mm, So interesting. And I can see how it works really well together. Because as I said, I I actually know a couple of people. And 
but I think that I can see from from your guys' side also, you know, that it is this can be um, it can work well together if you know when once you've given the client that time off to go and and spend with um, someone or and explore that with a therapist or counselor, etc. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I had one experience where a therapist actually said to a, a patient, "Look." Um, she sensed he was time, he, it was, uh, he, he, you know, he was ready to move forward and, uh, actually gave him my number so that he can work with me to come up with a plan and implement his plan. Ah, amazing. Yeah, that's, that sounds, I, when I was in the UK, I, um, actually worked with a coach myself and, um, and she worked with a lot of, um, she worked with a lot of women was her work and she did and she did amazing work and um she actually helped me make the decision um to come back to south africa um mm. and i i remember that it, you know she played such a valuable r- role and and i could absolutely see the benefits we we um counseling or we coaching um can give a client um that much more focus because in counseling we a lot less um, um, directed. Um, so mm. they, you know, they call it, um, you, you get directive therapeutic work and you get indirect, you know, indirect. And so we are not as directive as what one is in coaching. And mm. a lot of people actually enjoy that part, but it's that mm. slippery slope of giving people advice, etc. that we mm. have to be careful about. Yeah. <laughs> and make it very clear. Yes. There's, there's definitely overlaps uh in terms of the things that you need to be conscious of uh lots and lots of (laughs) self-awareness you know as you as you help people so anyway we've come to the end of our talk today and uh, shana is very you know uh great insights from you as usual and uh thank you julia for being there in the background um and so yeah Until next week, have a wonderful week. And if you're in the Cape of Storms or if you're up in Johannesburg or wherever you are in the country, uh, be safe. But remember, live your life with a purpose and on purpose. Until next week. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Julia. Bye. Bye.